So today we will read Vilapa Kusumanjali, verse 20. When may this maid servant, after washing your lotus feet and brushing your feet with a twig, seat you in a bathroom and having anointed you with very fragrant oils, massage you there. When may this maid servant, Raghunath is starting these words, when may this maid servant, after washing your lotus feet and brushing your feet with a twig, seat you in a bathroom and having anointed you with very fragrant oils, massage you there. In the previous words, Sri Raghunatha had a vision of his service of washing Srimati's lotus feet. And in these words, he sees him or herself rising Srimati's mouth, washing Srimati's mouth, brushing her feet with a twig taking her into another room and massaging her with the fragrant oil there. How intense is his devotional yearning? And how vivid and genuine are his spiritual visions? When the sadaka has a such a vision, he feels as if the beloved deity takes him by the hand. So, intimate words is written by Raghunath and very intimate commentary is given Baba Anathadas Babaji just in the beginning of his notes. And we can see how intimate relationship is between Srimati Radhika and Tulsi Manjari, her beloved maidservant. So this word is very sensitive and it's opening so many secrets about this so delicious relationship between Radhika and King Kari. And it requires from audience of devotees to be able to flow in his mellow. Bhakti, pure bhakti is very sensitive because the relationship between devotee and his Ishtadev is full of love, tenderness, closeness. And when we are listening this, we sadakas, we have to tune our hearts and mind so that we just flow 
in this mellow, which Raghunatha gave like his own example, we should allow this rasic devotee to guide us through this flow, through this mellow. Like a wood in the river. The wood which is going in the stream with the stream of the river is just a louding river and this currency to brought to brought him when wherever he wants and in the same mood when sadaka is allowing himself to flow in the words of acharyas rasik acharyas he can drown himself he can dive in this mellow of his feelings following this acharya so sensitive words of our sensitive great rasic devotees are helping us if we just tune our hearts on their tune So we should also learn how to listen and how to hear with open heart. Because this verse is explaining very intimate situation when Radhika is in the bathroom only with her kinkari. And who can see Radhika in such a situation in the bathroom, intimate place, only King Curry, but also her lover, Mohan. They are allowed to see Shimati Radhika to relish her form, her beautiful qualities in such intimate place, like a bathroom, in this case, or in the sleeping room. So this is the great privilege which Radhika is giving to Kenkaris, to be close with them, in a bathroom, when she is without clothes, or if she has some very thin clothes. And we Sadakas has opportunity to tune our feelings so that we can relish this pastime, this scene. And by relishing this, so many other bhavas will appear in our heart, intense bhavas. And addiction to Shimati Radhika will be more and more stronger. So Acharyas are giving us opportunity, golden opportunity, with golden words to develop addiction, passionate love for Shimati Radharani. And this is the greatest gift of Gora Bhaktavrinda, real followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And the more Devotee experience this kripa, 
his own spiritual identity, his own Swarup, is developing and developing more and more. Because to come in the position of Kinkari is possibly only by the Kripa. There is no other process which can help Jiva, who wants to attain that position, to really attain that position. And Baba is opening this, his commentary here by putting sadakas in a specific consciousness to connect us with Raghunath's feelings. This is the art of Rasik devotee who are preaching in this material world to connect the jivas with pure divine love. And this is their great expertise. They are opening the secret, but in the same time, their duty is to hide the sickness, this secret. In one way, they are opening very mercifully, but in the same time, they are using the words and expressions and explanations and which are not so clear all the time, just the hints, because their duty is to open rasa and to protect rasa in the same time. For those who are really eager to the, attain that goal. So we, neophytes, we should be aware of that. And when Anantadas Babaji is speaking here, he is opening the door of the greatest secret. So, Gurudev, if you want to say something, the more purified the heart is, the more vivid these transcendental experiences are. Uh. So all these discussions which we are doing here every day is not only discussions because this is the main intention of devotees. The main intention of these discussions, these sharings, is to develop this strong, passionate desire. and to develop one mellow through this desire. This is the main reason why we are practicing these sharings, discussions, kata, listening, and so on and so on. Not to overload us with more informations, but to apply in our life in such a way that desire appears and becomes more stronger and stronger. Yes, my dear. Then one question came, what is the meaning of purifying my heart? What, what is the meaning behind this? Gurudev can. No, no. No. Hey, you say. Yeah. Puring the heart, purifying the heart. Actually, we can 
answer this in different ways. But the puring the heart means to purify our materialistic consciousness. And when we say materialistic consciousness, it means to purify the mind, intelligence, senses, all existence. From what to purify? From impurities of materialistic consciousness that I am this body. But rather, I'm the sole, pure, living entity which belongs to divine love. So purifying the heart is necessary for someone who is deeply drowning in the ocean of material ocean. And for that reason, our Acharyas, spiritual masters, because they are masters in this science, they are giving us the process of Shravanan, Kirtanan, Smaran, and so on, and so on, and so on. But this process doesn't function by itself, a little, little, it, it functions, but not with full potency. If candidate, if sadaka, voluntary, don't leave his independent mood, independent mood, don't, he don't accept the words guidance, and especially mood of Acharyas. Instructions are helping to purify the heart. Mantras are uh, helping, but accepting the mood of Acharya is melting the heart. And by melting the heart, heart becomes softer and able to relish this transcendental love, pastimes, realm, because it's not on the level of the human consciousness. We should be aware of that. It's completely above of materialistic consciousness, even in sattva -gun. And for that, we need close association, connection, but also relationship. Not only connection, relationship. Which means, I'm giving your heart, and please give me your heart. So I, I said something. Many of you know, because in many different ways can be explained, but the point is the purifying the heart means purifying the senses, material senses and materialistic consciousness. That I am this body, false ego, and I need to purify my consciousness, my understanding and my feelings that I'm completely another identity. <laughs> Well, 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 thank you. Oh, Gaurav so nice to see you <laughs> in, in Munger. Uh, that's yes. the reason we come here, to give up yes. this yes. Wow. Yes. 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 Wow, very nice. I was just thinking, uh, Gauranga, how to purify my heart, no? Like, I uh, always think, like, what is missing in my life, that my heart is not pure and, and um, what you were just saying, like really like trying to understand that uh, like imagine if, if we are in love with somebody, fully in love, right? 
then our mind senses heart only sees beauty everywhere no even if somebody would like say something bad to me but i'm so much in love that i just don't care okay you think you think it was something <laughs> i think oh yeah so nice this person <laughs> today you know so i was thinking like how can we purify how can senses mind and heart be purified only when we are deeply in love right when we have a deeply loving relationship and this is i feel yes closeness with swamini when we are totally making her the object of our desires and of our senses and mind and heart then automatically this um, purification process starts i feel you know guru dev for instance is so compassionate to us that with all our mistakes he still gives so much love to us no so much love he so like he pierces through until we also start flowing in the same flow and so i was just feeling this um, that totally mad in love can you know wash everything and purely <laughs> like can we have to go in this loving washing machine of radharani and then everything will be clean <laughs> so nice yes we can purify purify our hearts uh even if we only close to our guru mm -hmm. that is what i understand also from opinion and um, yes it's so important there has to be one with a pure heart mm -hmm. he can teach us it is not a process that we are active try to uh, uh neglect our senses and sense activities it's really a process to give up what you said during the sunna to give up mm -hmm. our uh, old identification our uh, material identification mm -hmm. and accept really this new identification as a manjari and this is for this we need gurudev we need vrindavan and we need swamini also no? and for, for of course we need our uh, what is the name from this year? Sang zoom Sang zoom 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 sang yeah. mm -hmm. right. many times acharyas are saying why devotee who is practicing so many years so long devotional practice devotional service actually doesn't advance why is happening like this i am also asking <laughs> myself the same question why is so slow i And think that we are realizing many things in it saying that religious life is spiritual life when we join we start realizing many things but externally that we have to wake up at early morning we have to be clean take bath in morning before we are taking bath at the sleeping time so we change our habit to take bath in morning brush go to toilet every day these are the external uh, i habits only we trying to improve that but we not go in to see and find out my reality that was identified with the material body at one person but it was good that we do it to to enter ourselves that was also one stage of the practice but we cannot live in the foundation all the time we have to make the houses 
room, we have to make kitchen, bathroom, everything like a flat to be there. All right. Yes, good there. And that is the reality. Yes. This stage, actually, what you are talking about. This stage, actually, what you are talking about, and many of us have realization about that, that from the beginning we started from external point of our existence. So this stage has to be overcome yes. and to make another step. Yes. Otherwise, this is very dangerous stage. Right. Because it's not moving further, and only direction can go after some time can be down. And this is this, yes, that's the point. Many people <coughs> burn out because, in the name of devotion, they burn out because they find any feelings and realization. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, go uh, on. Ah, yeah. Go on. I was just thinking from my experience because you said like this, so many yeah. devotees made their experiences. Um, yeah. As long as I was trying to purify my heart, I mean, I, I was trying, actually, I run into burnout, like Gurudev said. In the moment, when I understood that I can do nothing, because I'm a useless small child, and I'm depending on someone who's grown up, in spiritual life means grown up in the feelings, grown up in his rati. I depend on a person who have rati. He can clean my heart. I can do nothing. And I always think again and again. Bumia apona lo vayu, kam mano bhutya evacha. Ahankara iti yame bina prakritya ashtata. Everyone knows this verse. And I was thinking about this. It's going from earth, which is the cross thing, and it goes more up, finer and finer, to the subtlest element, and this is ahankara, false ego. So false ego is even in intelligence. And in this moment, it's understandable that your intelligence cannot help you because false ego is in it. And that means you have no chance to purify yourself. It's not possible. You need someone who is above that. Now we can say, okay, the soul is not in these eight elements. It's higher, but therefore I have to come to that platform. So how to come there? Someone has to invite me, give me the hand and say, come, come on, step, step over. I will help you. So we need help from a person who is on another platform, who is completely in himself. Sitadeha. So we need such a person, and this is a guru. And we need these kind of persons who share with us. And because of the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we have the association. We are reading Vilap Kusumanjali. The speech of Vilap Kusumanjali is philosophy, or how it's called, uh, 
like prosa, I'm missing the word. Poetry. Poetry. Poetry, yes. Poetry. And poetry is actually the language of feelings. It's not knowledge. This poetry is actually transporting the feeling of such elevated souls directly through the ears in our heart. And this is cleaning our heart immensely and forever, not just for some time, like knowledge. Because knowledge you can forget. But feelings who touched your heart, you will never forget. So this is my experience. I cannot help myself. I'm a fool. I'm stupid, limited. What I can do? Nothing. The only thing I can do is understand that and give myself in the hand of persons who can help me. Then my heart will be cleansed by the association. That's why I'm here with you. Please help me to clean my heart. Jai Shri Radhe. Radhe Radhe Gauravani. Thank you. Yes, the poetry I will continue to read now is most effective way to infuse the heart with the pure love. And it's only way actually to describe rasa. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying rasa can be expressed only through the poetry. But we have to tune our heart to such kind of poetry. And we should be able to enter in the words of Acharyas seeing poetry in these words, not philosophy. And the vi vibration then, music of their words, poetry of their words, will slowly start to melt the heart. So Baba is continuing. By the mercy of Sri Gora Sundara, all these beautiful things have been revealed by Acharyas. Is there any greater cause of heart-rending lamentation if I am deprived of the treasure they came to bring? Although I was born in Gora Sundara's age. I will, I will repeat again and listen poetry in this commentary. By the mercy of Sri Gora Sundar, all these beautiful things have been revealed by Acharyas. Is there any greater cause of heart rending lamentation? if I am deprived of the treasure they came to bring. Although I was born in Gora Sundara's age. This is pure poetry. In the previous words, Sri Raghunatha Das had a vision of himself washing Shiradika's lotus feet in the morning and when this vision disappears he feels a greatly burning sensation in his heart 
Save my life by giving me your devotional service. Save my life by giving me your devotional service. Just meditation on just one sentence. This is cry of Raghunath, is the pure poetry of his pure heart. Everything is in this sentence. All the books we can <laughs> put in this sentence. Save my life. Which life? Which kind of life? Giving me your devotional service. Everything is clear in this poetic expression. And only someone who has already enough taste can develop more and more addiction and divine passion by listening these words of our Rasik devotees. And in that way, melt and change the heart. Save my life. Not Raghunata's life. Not Goranga Sundara's life. I don't care for it. Save my existence. By giving me your devotional service. Baba, Baba is continuing. These aspirations for Adarani's devotional service don't awaken in an ordinary heart. Again, poetry. It sounds, but it is poetry. They will awaken in the heart of person who is able to completely give up his dependence on material world. This is the point, you see. Again, the heart. This is very dangerous, this thing. If we do this and we open this door, we don't like to come back and we become completely useless for our life, what we do before, until now, right? So we become useless. So we have to be ready to give up this life. And now everyone can think about this point. Are we really ready? to give up everything, all our maybe relatives, relationships, and so on and so on, our properties. If we become crazy for this world, we become also useless. And uh, so we, we need to think about this point also. Are we ready? Because when we're not completely ready, and that means that our heart is pure, then it will not happen, right? Then um, there's still some blockage. And perhaps could it also be the other way around, that we really become useful for this life when we are conscious about our soul, and that my soul in me is um, awakening and and is is living, and so 
I'm in full love and I'm happy and I'm full of bliss and I'm tolerant and I'm embracing and my soul is, is vivid in this life, in this material body. <laughs> Sorry. Is it, isn't it a question of integration more than of separation? Beautiful, no? So then we sing. Then we become really useful. Yeah? <laughs> that is the position where the runners and the girls on the red valley that uh, somebody take our hand and bring us out from that material concept to the spiritual self concept. It's the mercy of the way. He could give the hand to come. I will help you. This is the one help we need. We cannot have by effort, can we? Mercy is required, but we, we have to do. Our need has to be more. Yes, when jump is important, but then our self After that, we we'll go back consciousness, material consciousness, but only for meeting, not living there. Before we are living, and it's difficult to come out from that. But when one help comes, then we live in our self consciousness and we reject that. But it is consciousness. The thing is not going. Say my body is there, but not living there. Rade, rade. I was just thinking about this sentence here. Um, to give up his dependence on the material world. We think we are dependent on the material world. It doesn't have to do so much how much we own, how much we have in which kind of situation we are materially. It's more a question of, do I think I depend on that? It's very clear. It's poetry. It's a very clear point. No, you don't depend. The only thing you depend on is the purest love. There you always depend on. You don't need anything else. You can have everything else because it's in love included, but you don't depend on the other things. You only depend on Radharani's mercy and love. She asked. How can Radha Dasya? find the place in the heart which is filled with worldly feelings. How can Radha Dasya find the place in the heart which is filled with worldly feelings? The working of Maya must have disappeared from the mind and intelligence. The Lord tells Arjuna in Bhagavad Gita, the devotee who has offered his mind and intelligence to me is very dear to me. Now, this is 
the path of Sharanagati. Radha Dasya is even more difficult. Wow. It's not easy to offer mind intelligence to the Lord. It's not easy at all. And the more devotee is advancing in his and practice his spiritual life, he understands that. But Radha Dasya is even more difficult. Complete selfless, which even pure devotee, some prema level, doesn't have the all of them, doesn't have that. So, my understanding is this is the main reason why there is no process exists which can help us to become Radharani's maidservants. Only Kripa. Like Gauravani said, to take for the hand, I'm useless. I cannot do it. But I want. Why Radha Dasya is even more difficult? Baba is answering now. Without full absorption, it cannot be accomplished. Full absorption in a stable, in my real identity, that I'm such and such, so and so, this and that, made servant of my beloved Swami. And this full absorption is not possible because everything is connected. It's not separated. This full absorption is result of addiction to Radharani. Yes. We cannot be full absorbed and then I will be addicted. No, it doesn't work like this, as I understand. We have to open the heart to become addicted by the mercy and then absorption will be automatically <laughs> manifest in my mind and heart or chitavrit, like we say. Uh, Please that, elaborate. Rati. Rati, yes. This is full of that. Yes. Rati. Rati, Rati is the... Wife of Kama Deva. Madness. <laughs> Pagala. Full of madness. In the material world, the highest drug, the highest addiction is called heroin. Yeah. And in the spiritual world, the highest addiction has to be for our heroine. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Rati. Rati has been that. Like, I cannot live without heroine. When the drug similar Rati. I cannot live without him. Mm. It is difficult to be out of from you. For you, I can leave everything. That's it. Starts. This wow. is the beginning, middle, and in the end, this Charanerati for Guru Manjari is bringing devotee 
further and further and further to the final ultimate goal. And this is why we need to follow the mood and to serve those great personalities. Yeah. Then we can say we are on the Raga path, Raga Bhakti path, following the mood and serving the person, external and internal. Yes, yeah, the great science. <laughs> I will continue, if you don't mind. Srila Raguna Das Goswami was once absorbed in his bhajan. In an open place on the bank of Shyamakunda, while Krishna stood right behind him, relishing the sweetness of this devotee's love. Just then, two tigers came to drink water from the kunda, passing by right before Raghunath, who didn't notice anything being completely absorbed. Srila Sanatan Goswami saw what happened from a distance and said, Raghunath, your fame will increase if you sit out here in the open. Bhajana, devoid of humility, uh, Bhajana, devoid of humility, is a lifeless. Ah. Unless you engage body, words, and mind, you cannot savor the rasa of Bhajana. Therefore, stay in a cottage and meditate on Swamini's form, qualities, and pastimes there. Sanatana Goswami, whose mind was sprinkled with the love for Sri Raghunath, didn't tell him what he had actually happened. From that day, Kutir's system started at Radha Kunda. Because the bhajan, inner bhajan, is not for open show. Yet. And we can see how our acharyas Ragunata Sanatana, Ragunata Rupa Ragunata is also teaching us from their sadaka behaviors that humility is so important. <laughs> and we have to be very cautious. We sadakas, neophytes, I don't know anything. I'm foolish. I am naive. I am not aware of so many desires in the corner of my heart. I am not aware of this. Bukti, Mukti, Siddhi, Kami are just in the waves are coming. <laughs> But Sanatana, whose mind was sprinkled with love for Sri Raghunata, now we are coming again on the point. The Guru, the spiritual master, is sprinkled with love for his disciple.
And when this kind of love existing between Guru and Shishya, then whatever Gurudev is saying, giving instruction or whatever, Shishya is following. Because sometimes we know, okay, I'm useless, I'm full, I completely depend on the mercy. But when mercy comes, in the form of correction, I say, oh, no, no, thank you very much. I, I don't feel that I'm able to do this. It's not convenient to me. So theoretically, I know that I depend on mercy. But in the same time, I'm <laughs> holding for my independence. Not today. I cannot take because I am very poor. I take my seat today. Yeah, to wait. Yes. <laughs> I have an other plans. Sorry, <laughs> not today. <laughs> so when we are speaking, actually, that we are useless, we should understand that we have really to become useless. And when someone understands that he is useless. He's accepting all help. If I don't, if I'm not convinced in my heart that I am really useless, for Sadaka is very difficult to accept the help. <laughs> Something is going on in the middle. Okay, can I read? Can I continue? Okay. Lacking, we are continuing. Now Baba is starting Lila. <laughs> Lacking his desired service, Sri Raghunatha cries. But by Swamini's grace, he gets transcendental vision of his Siddha service. Tulasi uses a soft twig of a mango tree to brush Sri Radhika's teeth. and pours water on Swamini's hands from the nozzle, nozzle of a golden pitcher. The water becomes red when it runs over Srimati's hands and the fragrant water she pours over her face becomes even more fragrant afterwards. Swamini spits the water with which she flushed her mouth into a golden lotta. with the fingers of her left hand. Tulapsi wipes Swamini's curly locks away from her limitlessly beautiful forehead, cheeks and eyes to avoid that she becomes overwhelmed by remembering Mohan through the bluish color of these locks. Yeah. 
This small scene is a very beautiful example for the budget. It's not necessary to run on another pastimes, but just to stop the mind on this beautiful scene. So these curly locks of Radhika, which are coming over her forehead, her face, over her eyes, is actually Radhika's waves of emotion, mm. which are expressed through the locks of her hairs. And her hair is blackish bluish, blackish bluish. So we can see the importance of Manjari Seva to remove this hairs in front of her eyes so that she can finish her flushing the feet putting the water over her face. Because this bluish color of flux of Radhika's hair can confuse her more. And Manjari is preparing Radhika to dress her. And so on and so on. It is the service of Bhava Mai, whose Mahabhava is thus welling up. All emotional radhika, Bhava Mai, all emotional radhika. And when we say all emotional, it means one pointed all emotional. In everywhere and everything she sees, one pointed desire of her heart. And this is the Mohan. When Telasi takes Swamini into the bathroom after combing her hair, she gives Swamini a matchless savor by showing her a sweet picture of Mohan there. Pointing at it with her finger, Tulasi says, your teeth look like a pomegranate seeds that attract the parrot of Vrindavan. Here he is. Look at him. Vishaka had drawn that picture when she had just fallen in love with Krishna, Purvaraga. And Tulasi reminds Swamini of the sweet history of that picture, saying, Swamini, I remember you once wrote a letter to Krishna <clears throat> saying, You are living in my house as a picture. And whatever I flee, there you are standing to stop me with the stretched out arms. Mm. 
you are living in my house as a picture. And wherever I flee, meine Nachtecken und Batterien habe ich immer wieder hingelegt. There you are standing to stop me with a stretched out arms. In this way, Tulasi makes Swamini relish the sweetness of her previous pastimes and simultaneously washes her mouth and brushes her teeth. Blessed is this maidservant. This is the internal beauty of Radha Dasya. Internal beauty of Radha Dasya. Absorbed in identification with the Guru given Siddha Swarup. Once served Swaminiji's Ujvala Murti. And the aspirant should learn services like toothbrushing by meditating on how to eternally perfect maidservant Tulsi performs them. So I will repeat again. Absorbed in identification with the Guru given Siddha Swarup, one serves Swaminiji's Ujvala Murti. <clears throat> Ujvala means brightness full of light. And what Radhika is embodiment of light, embodiment of brightness here, like a Ujvala Murti. And why she is embodiment of this brightness? Because she is always in her heart, passionate heart, with her lover. And her passion is burning from her heart and all pores of her body. And because of that, her appearance is so bright. Ujvala. Because of her unlimited love and passion, Anurag. So this Ujvala, which is in connection with Radhika, explains her emotional Bhavamai position. In connection with Radhika. Absorbed in identification with the Guru given Siddha Swarup, one serves Swaminiji's Ujjvala Murti. Only through this Siddha Swarup, someone can approach Radhika. And serve her and be close to her not from the bodily consciousness of life. The aspirant Baba is continuing, aspirant should learn services like toothbrushing by meditating on how the eternally perfect maidservant Tulasi performs that. How Nitya Siddhas <clears throat> are doing this seva Sadakas should learn by meditating on their pure loving activity. 
pure loving Seva. In his own Swarup. This is the practical instruction for the bhajan. How to start and how slowly to develop own spiritual identity in close rel a relation with Shimatiradika. And Lila, which Baba described before, is helping in that, nourishing this. The devotee he see himself or herself, better to say. How standing with his Guru Manjari and looking this scene with full absorption. They are the Gurus of the Yugala Seva. They are the Gurus of Yugala Seva. Not someone who is in Sakiras, Sakyaras, Vatsalyaras, Shantyaras, and so on. No. These eternal Manjaris are the Gurus of Yugala Seva. How properly to feel the needs of Radha Mohan. How, pro how to feel their feelings, their thoughts. And it can be learned through her maidservants. They are the gurus of Yugala Seva that have descended from the Raja Nikunja along with Sriman Mahaprabhu to take neophyte devotees out of this material world into the Nikunja abode by teaching them Manjari Bhava Sadhana. Tadbhavalip Sunakarya Vraja Lokan Sarata. And those who desire that mood follow in the footsteps of the people of Raja. Sri Rupa and Raghunata Das Goswami are these people of Raja that have given the sadhakas a perfect example of how to perform Manjari Seva, both in internal and external bodies. Tulasi has brought Swamini back to external consciousness by making her relish the remembrance of previously played pastimes. After Swamini brushed her feet, Tulasi hands her a bow-shaped tongue scrapper. Swamini holds this scrapper between her tender index fingers and thumbs and cleans her tongue with it. Such a simple scene. But so relishable. Her body gently rocks along while she scrapes her tongue. Tulasi smiles slightly when she sees this. For this motion reminds her of a certain rasic situation. And but showing her splendor of her smile, 
Tulasi makes Swamini most happy. For it also awakens her remembers of this Rasika situation. So this is Prashanga Seva. To remember Radhika, to give her a pleasure by remembering her more and more her loving pastimes with the Mohan. It's not that he, she doesn't remember that. She remembers every pastimes. Every pastimes is deeply carved in Radhika's heart. But when she is listening and drinking to her ears from her from the mouth of her beloved King Curry from pure heart of her beloved King Curry these pastimes are becoming more and more sweeter and relishable so this is the power of listening Even Radhika is relishing through her ears when her kinkari is speaking to her, remembering her about previous lilas, and in that way intensify these lilas. Because in that moment, when Previous Lilas becomes more intense in Radhika's mind and heart. She's becoming more and more bright. More light is coming from her all Mahabhava appearance and form. And then she slightly smiles. Again, Tulasi makes Swamini flush her mouth and then she wipes her hands and mouth with a thin white handkerchief. Swamini then washes her face once again with the nectar of her own smile. Devotee who is fixed in smarana should be completely free from external consciousness and should identify himself only with his Siddha Swarup. The form, sound, touch, taste and fragrance of Swamini is the only means of survival for such Devotee. Please, Radhe, save my life by engaging me in your devotional service. Raghunath is speaking in the beginning of the commentary. Save my life. The form, sound, touch, taste and fragrance of Swamini is the only means of survival for such devotee. He has closed his eyes for material world. And all other thoughts are insignificant. Prema Bhakti. Oh, what is written here? Yeah. Always dive 
in the nectar ocean of loving devotion. Everything else is like an ocean of alkali. I don't know how to explain to you alkali, something sour or something like this. Always dive. This word is very important. It's not said always swim or always fly. No, always dive. And who can dive? Someone who is completely identified with his spiritual identity. One Baba, one Melo. If we are not fixed in our one mellow, then we are flying, we are swimming, and it's very interesting, very nice. So many places we can visit. So many clouds we can see. So many things from different perspectives. I'm very open-minded person but and this is very good but such kind of perception lacks depth because the person cannot dive deeply he knows everything but very little relish and our Gurudev, we are really very fortunate persons that he is always pushing us, pressing us, embrace us with her intention for our benefit to be fixed in our position like Radha Dasi, if we really want that. Always dive in the nectar ocean of loving devotion. Everything else is like an ocean of alkali. The bathroom is a secret quarter. The door is closed. Swamini is alone with Tulasi, sitting on a marble chair. All the paraphernalia for her baths are put ready. Tulasi is rendering the service of rubbing Swamini's limbs with oil. She reveals Swamini's Sri Anga, beautiful body. She reveals Swamini's Sri Anga. Beautiful body. So confidential situations in this secret, close quarter of bathroom. And can you imagine which kind of fortunate persons we are that through this beautiful Rasik words of Rasik devotees, we can look at least through the holes in this intimate scene. We are mercy cases. And if devotee can relish this, he is even more mercy case. Who else can has this secret open in front of his heart and mind? In the secret quarter of a bathroom, door is closed. No one is can come inside. The door is closed. But Radhika, 
and her king curry are in sight. But not only there, them. Sadakas, whose hearts are in a proper tune with Raghunath or Tulsi, much better to say, Tulsi. They also are present there with their hearts and their visions. And for this, we need absorption. Oh, Gurudev. The bathroom is a secret quarter. The door is closed. Swamini is alone with the Tulsi, sitting on a marble chair. All the paraphernalia for her bath are put ready. Tulsi is rendering the service of rubbing Swamini's limb with oil. She reveals Swamini's Sri Anga. Beautiful. Sri, beautiful Anga body. And massage with oil. Fortunate Tulasi can now freely massage those limbs that even Mohan is not allowed to see with the oil. Tulsi massages all of Radhika's limbs from tip to toe with the fragrant Narayan oil, a special oil for sore muscles. Touching her just like Mohan does. This is the heart, heart's service. Tulsi is touching Radhika's oiled body, perfumed body, in a such a way that Radhika is feeling that Mohan is massaging her. This is the expertise of Manjari Seva. And it can be learned only from someone who is already on that position. And this is the heart's service. Hmm. Poetry, you see, this is poetry. Every lila, every particle of pastime is full of rasa and automatically is full of rasa poetry. And automatically in the mind, on the mind of Sadaka, these pictures, these scenes, are coming. First of all, she opens Swamini's cloud blue braid, moistens it with the scented oil, and combs it with the jeweled comb. Each strand of hair is dearer to her than millions of lives. Tulasi experiences all of Swamini's sweetness, the softness of her golden body, the sweetness of her smile, the wideness of her eyes, the vastness, vastness of her breasts, And when she is finished, she calls Radhika, Hey Shyama Ju, a popular name of Radha and Vrindavan, thus breaking her meditation on Krishna like a bolt out 
of the blue. And startled, Shiradika asks, Who is it? Oh, is it you, Tulsi? Your touch is like Krishna's. It is the service of Baba Mai, all emotional Radhika, and one must dive in the waves of this Baba, learning these services from those who have already dived in before. So, I would like to stop. I don't know, I feel that we should stop here. I feel that. If someone, of course, wants to add something, it's okay, but I will stop reading. It's enough time. And if someone wants to add something or to express his feeling, it will be very nice. Otherwise, thank you very much for your participation. Rade, Rade. Oh, good evening. Yes. I was just thinking about why Tulasi is wiping the black blue hairs with the left hand that Swamini don't get involved in seeing this color. But on the other side, she's showing her the picture and reminding her that she was actually writing a love letter to Krishna. So maybe you have some idea of that, someone? Maybe Gurudev? Ah, he's busy. Say, I'm in the bathroom, sorry, nothing is coming. I was thinking this is actually such a perfect seva on the point. Because she's doing Shringara seva and she's reminding her that actually she is Nitya Kishori. She's always young in the perfect age and she's always fresh for her beloved always perfect in the right age and in this mood she's remembered on her letter what also means that actually Krishna also wrote a letter they were just fresh in love so it's a very romantic pink, uh, finger pointing of Tulasi showing here, look, you are just fresh in love. Nitya Kishori. And then in this mood, it's coming to the massaging actually. And then Radharani feels that her beloved is with her. And before there's this scratching of the tongue. So if we see this in one line, actually, I see it's really a, such a perfect, completely most proper way to serve of Tulasi, actually. Bringing Swamini in the mood. And it's not that, you know, sometimes we have some idea how to do, what to do, what to serve. But this is actually given by the mercy of Radharani. So she's performing the perfect seva. I 
And I would like to hear from Gurudev something about this more, but I think he's busy. So, thank you very much, everyone. Gauravani, for your final words. Sorry if we make some mistakes from my broken English also. A very funny readings, but what can I do? I need your mercy. Mm. Radhe Radhe Gurudev. Radhe Radhe. All the Radhe, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Thank Radhe, you. Radhe Baya. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Buenos días. Buenos días. Buenos días. Ya, Google. ¿Cómo está? Good, my guru Ted. Naturally, from my our parents, right? So, if we are sincere, we will also heritage his must. Bless I need all of your blessings that I can do this. Sri Radhe. Sri Radhe. Sri Radhe. Sri Radhe. Sri Radhe. 